Welcome to Rockefeller's Barbershop. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will be blessed and be glad in Him. Today I want to introduce myself. My name is Rico Rodriguez at Rockefeller's Barbershop here in San Antonio, Texas, 1733 Babcock Road. My phone number is 210-782-5188. Come out and get your haircut here at Rockefeller's Barbershop. You are listening to I Am Refocused Podcast on iHeartRadio. You are listening to I Am Refocused Podcast with your host, Shemaya Reed. This podcast is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. Now, let's tune in into today's podcast. Hey guys, this is I Am Refocus Podcast, and today we're back at it again. You know what time it is. It's Thursday. And before we get started, guys, I want to give a major shout out to everyone who's supporting us, our sponsors. First and foremost, Rico Rodriguez, Rockefeller's Barbershop. You know he holds it down in San Antonio if you need a haircut. So if you're not in San Antonio or you're on your way to San Antonio, make sure you stop by. That's 1733 Babcock Road, San Antonio, Texas. And also shout out to Miss Kim, the best donuts in the City of San Antonio, River City Donuts. You can find her at 1723 Babcock Road. And uh, last but not least, Bay Bay McClinton, all sports speed and conditioning. You want to get fit, you want to get to the NFL, just check out the pictures on his walls. He's, he's a legend in San Antonio. So today we have our honor to have Danny Brooks of D.W. Brooks Funeral Home. How are you doing today, Danny? Good morning, good morning. Uh, I'm excited to be here. It's my first time on radio, but I think this is an awesome chance to get my voice out there and kind of explain a little bit about the funeral home industry. So uh, I really think this is cool what you're doing with Refocused because that's something I had to do is refocus my uh, goals for the funeral home, and that's what we're trying to do. So So tell us uh, from the beginning, how did you get started into that business? My father started the funeral home in 1990, uh, Danny Brooks Sr., and it's as uh, far back as I can remember, a little kid, four or five years old. Most kids have soccer practice, basketball games. My brother and I had on little suits. We were going on funerals, and we were helping move flowers, uh, carry caskets, and do what we can. So I've been around it as far as I know, and, I mean, that's all I really know is the funeral home. I love it, so it's my passion. And when you first got started, what, what was the first, what's your first assignment on the job helping your father? Uh, my first one? <laughs> well... Illegally, when I became a funeral director, because I had been there forever, uh, he threw me in office to meet a family. Uh, I'm 18 years old, right out of college, and he says, well, you're, you're licensed. Uh, take care of it. Mm. And uh, it's not like school. It doesn't go through the script. I mean, you got crying, emotions, people upset, mad, and uh, you got to calm them down. You got to tell them, hey, take a breath. It's okay. Yeah. It's tough, but we're going to get through this together. I'm just as nervous and sad for you. So I do it every day, but I definitely feel for my families because it's not easy to lose a mom or dad, grandpa, whoever. Mm-hmm. Death hurts everyone. And the table's flipped. I mean, this week, uh, our uncle is going in. Well, my dad's uncle. Oh, so, wow. Sorry, you know, man. his service is Saturday, and wow. it, it keeps going. It doesn't stop. It hurts. We're going to be there, and I'm going to be in the audience with everyone else. So the staff will take care of me, and we'll be sitting there. And, and how's the process when when you're getting things together? Like, how many meetings do you have with family? Or are you just kind of like you guys stay, you know, with your family and we'll, we'll just take care of all this for you? Or how, how's that process? That's a great question. When it comes to our family, mm-hmm. uh, I did the initial arrangement. I got the call and uh, I went to the hospital to pick them up. And. Now we're, uh, we met one day in the office, but the staff took over the rest. They're going to do the dressing, prepping, all the behind-the-scenes stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really hard for us, too. We don't want to see our loved ones there. But I have a good team around me, and they're going to take care of it. So all I have to do is show up there to the service, and we'll be in good hands. And you mentioned about refocusing. What, what was that all about with you know taking over your dad, what he's been doing for you guys? In 2014, my father uh, decided to retire. And I was able to take over the business, and we had to do things a little bit different. My dad did the best he could. He did a great job to run a small business. A black-owned business is very hard. But in 2014, that opportunity came, and I said, Dad, we have something unique. We have the staying power. We've been here. Mm -hmm. If you give me this chance, I can really make us grow. 
So that came down to learning some things. Um, I had to get a new people around me. We needed a CPA. We were doing it in-house. We needed a new team. Uh, I didn't have running the funeral home experience. I knew how to be a great funeral director, mm-hmm. but I didn't know the back end stuff. So we had to get people together. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was doing good. You know, we were promoting it, advertising mm-hmm. a little bit, the radio and church flyers, the Brooks Funeral Home under new management. And we're doing good. The sales are great. But then 2015, it gets to a like a halt. It slows down. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, nothing was changing. So... Mm-hmm. That's when I really had to focus and say, okay, I really want to do this. What am I doing wrong? And instead of doing little odd jobs on the side to make money, I said, you know what? Let me refocus. Mm -hmm. And I became a life insurance agent to promote my families to say, hey, you know, this is something you need here. You need to get life insurance. You might not get it with me, but a lot of my families are struggling to pay for these services. And I'm like, well, let me offer that. So in return, that helps us as the funeral home secure our families. Let me be the best pre-need agent. So we started doing that, too. I had been an agent, but I wasn't advertising. I wasn't pushing the importance of you have to pre-plan. I mean, that's something that's promised is death. Uh, You know, I hope Jesus comes back first, but Mm -hmm. most of us are going to have to cross that path. So, you know, that's what really helped us is pushing that. And how do you say, you know, someone is coming to you for your services and how you calm that person down when they're just, you know, they can't think straight. They're, you know this horrible situation happened to their family, how do you guys calm them down? When the phone rings, just example, two, three in the morning at night, someone's lost a loved one, um, I always tell them, you know, first off, let's take a second. It's, it's hard, and I hope they're going to pick us, but a lot of people, they fail to do this. You should shop around with anything. You, you shop around when you're going to buy a car, you shop around maybe for looking for a restaurant on Yelp. You should do the same with a funeral home. Just don't pick the first one Granny picked. Mm-hmm. Call three or four of them. Call me. You yeah. know, you might like the funeral director. You might not. But I'm going to answer the phone. I, I, I really take pride in being there. My brother, Tenzel's holding it down right now at the office. Shout out to him. But I, I take it important. I think you should look at those funeral homes, look at their Google reviews. Just like you do a Yelp review, you should look at their Facebook, see if it's active, see if they're doing anything. Another thing, see if their prices are out there. Um, Is it honest on their website or, well, you have to come in? Like, I treat it just like that. So with my families, I think we take pride in making it known. You know, this is up front. We'll work with you, but there's no hidden fees and there's no games. There's no, oh, by the way. And uh, one thing, and I can say that we do, if I misquote it by $5 or $100, we're just going to live with it. You know, I don't like going back to a family in a tough time asking for more money. If I made the mistake, we'll eat it. It's not a big deal. I want my families happy, and that's what's kept us around. The continued success of taking care of them. What was some of the challenges that you first when you face, you know, taking that management role for your dad? What was some of the bumps in the roads that you had to overcome? The hardest part of taking over a business is there's people that I've been around forever they don't respect you and they say well you know your dad did it this way and he did it this way and we are used to doing it that way and I love him to death but I want to do it this way and I see a new vision so you're going to have to join my vision and it was really hard to respectfully let a few people go because they couldn't see what I wanted to do and my dad did an awesome Mm -hmm. job but I want to take it to a new level. When I leave out of here, I want to be one of the best funeral directors ever. And that's not something some people talk about, but I take pride in it. I mean, yeah, I'm excited to put on my suit to help a family in tough times. Mm-hmm. So I had to get those people on board. And now I have a great team. I have a very diverse team. And that's something that funeral homes need, too. I don't want to be known as just a black funeral home or just a funeral home on the east side. We can serve any family. We have people that can do Catholic funerals, people that can do Jewish funerals. We can take care of any need. So we can handle a rosary at a Catholic church. We know what to do. But I surrounded myself with people that know more about other religions. So I'm comfortable there. I don't know the most if I go to a Muslim funeral, but I got a guy on the team that can definitely step up, and he's comfortable. And he teaches me every day. And it is a service. And how has most people reacted to you when you tell them what you do for a living? Most people give me that look like, um, you do what? You're young. You're not creepy looking. You're not an old man. And I, I say, well, not all of us. I mean, they have to start somewhere. And most people in the industry, it's their second or third career. But, um, you know, I, I knew what I wanted to do. And I explained it to them. And 
after you talk to someone for a while, they realize, yeah, it's not that crazy. I mean, a lot of days I'm in the front doing paperwork with families. I mean, I can definitely go in the back and do what we have to do. But I'm kind of like a paper pusher. I'm up front smiling with the family or at the hospital meeting them. And as a young entrepreneur, you know, it is a business. What's some of the challenges that you face as far as just letting your establishment be known to the public? To get it out there, you you really have to just put yourself out in a in a place to get your name out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, what I try to do is be seen in uh, in the community. I, I like to attend different events. I like to tell people about it. One thing that's helping me is I'm pushing social media. I think a lot of funeral homes aren't, but mm-hmm. I think that that tool is powerful. I can get my message from here to Houston in one second. And, you know, we can go to Houston to pick up your loved one if we need to. We can go to Seguin. And social media, we can do that. We, we let you know, you know, we have all kinds of specials and packages and promotions. And we really push come in and pre-plan. And if you don't feel like coming by, we'll come to you. Mm-hmm. So we can do a pre-plan or life insurance at Starbucks. So Or here. Yeah, here too. <laughs> we'll do it here. That's what, right. What some things that you learned from your father as far as just running things and leadership and organization? The best advice my dad's gave me, and he didn't have to say it, but I've seen it, is treat everybody the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. That is probably the best thing. Um, I really take pride in taking care of my families. If you come in there with no money, no insurance, and you're worried, or if you come in there with the biggest policy I've ever seen, you're going to get the same amount of respect and service. Everybody needs a home going. Everyone wants to put their mom or dad away the best they can, so that's what I'm here for. I want to help you. I don't look at your policy first. I don't care how much you have. I want to give you the best we can do. And if we got to wait an extra week to do the service or if you have to go through GoFundMe and we have to wait, I'm okay with it. I want you to come in early to do Mm -hmm. it, but I'm okay to wait for it. I don't mind working with you. Um, So that's my thing is just take care of the families, treat them respectfully no matter Mm -hmm. what. Because all of them, I mean, it's hard. So we have to work together. We're in this together. And a lot of families, they may not prepare for these type of things what's some advice will you give to people just because it's important to know what you can and should do if this ever happens to you where you have to use your service what's some advice will you give to people to know just have some knowledge of what you should do and prepare for Pre-planning is very important. I think more and more people are becoming educated, but there's a ton of people that have no idea that you can come into a funeral home and pay for it early. Um, One of the best things about pre-planning is it locks in the price. You get today's price versus the price 30 years from now. So I wish gas was the same price as it was when I started (laughs) driving. I wish I could pre-pay that. Um, Another thing a lot of funeral homes won't tell you, and they're hiding it, is if you pre-plan with me, you can switch that somewhere else, and they're going to honor it. And same if you bring one over from someone else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a good example is we don't lose a lot of families going to other places, but what if they move to Las Vegas? I don't have a funeral home there. I wish I did, but they need to know that when you move, and this is a military town, mm-hmm. you can take that over there. That's not a problem. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> another good thing about prepaying, you need to make sure the company, the funeral home, is legit. If they're taking your monthly payment and putting it in their back pocket, that's dangerous. Hmm. What if they go out of business? They disappear. Mm -hmm. We're working with an insurance company, National Guardian Life. Our money goes every month to a bonded company. So, God forbid we go out, your money's safe. It's not going to get lost in the system or bankrupt with the company. Mm -hmm. So that's something you should know. Um, I even push getting life insurance if you don't want to pre-plan. Life insurance, there's a couple of catches and agents don't explain. You need to be in it two years. They, they say, oh, you're good tomorrow when you pass. Well, that's that's not true. You're going to get that premium back, not the whole amount. So uh, life insurance is normally a larger amount, but that's left over for your family or whoever. So think about it. We offer term and whole life. Uh, and they say, well, what's the difference? Well, term... You pick a window to pay on, 20 years, 30 years. After that window, you need to start over. Mm-hmm. It's normally a higher amount, but it's a window. I, I like term because it's cheaper for people. Maybe $20 a month can get you 30000 in coverage. Whole life insurance, you pay on it your whole life, but 
it's guaranteed after those two years. Mm -hmm. So those are ways we're pushing families to help kind of prepare. And if they come in with nothing, they, they don't have any plans, uh, I think it's great. We offer cremation at $795. I mean, not saying that's nothing, but that's a fair price, and I think you can get it really quick to take care of them and still put them away with dignity. And what's some of the responses to people, you know, that come to you, you know, for the, you know, first time experience of going through this situation? What is some of the responses after, you know, everything you did, your team was done professionally and done right? Like feedback? Yeah, feedback. What's some of the responses to, if you had any? A lot of my families, we follow up with them about two weeks later when the death certificates come in. Mm -hmm. And they say, I really didn't know it was that simple or that easy. And that's what we really like to do is we're taking something that's difficult and making it simple. Mm -hmm. We have nice brochures that are real simple and sleek. They can give you great work. But it's just laid out. It's not hidden or adding a bunch of numbers together and number crunching. It's This is a package we've created. We picked some of the top items that people need and put it together and wrote it down for them. So the feedback is it's simple. And I think a lot of times we surprise family. They say, hey, you know, those young guys, they know what they're doing, and it's a lot easier. Mm-hmm. And I think that comes with experiences. You know, new people are doing it in a different way. Um, the funeral home industry has been around forever, but my brother and I just see it a little different. We've been to hundreds, thousands of funerals, and other people's funerals, and other funeral home owners' funeral home funerals, and we just see it different. And I say, well, you know, that wheel's crooked. Maybe they need to fix that under the casket. We, we take pride in that, mm-hmm. and we want to give you the best we can. And we tell families, you know, hey, this was wrong. We can do it better for you, you know, and we apologize. And, you know, I'm not perfect. A few weeks ago, I forgot to order a pot plant for a family. And I told them, I said, hey, that's my bad. Let me cut you, you know, that back to you. I'm not Mm going to cheat you. They never noticed. And it could have went by, but I'm not going to do that to anybody. I wouldn't want anyone to cheat me. So. I mean, this is a service, you know, you don't always hear this at the dinner table, (laughs) but it's very important. Right. And this is something, you know, I think it's a special calling for certain people to do because it's not just like any other career. This is this service happens to all of us, because like you said earlier, you know, our due day is coming, you know, for all of us. What's some things that you and your team does? Especially like if you hire someone new, what's, what's some of the training that you have to go through with a new employee? I love getting new people that are right out of school because I can mold them to be like us. And, mm-hmm. you know, every funeral home's different, but we really want them to be caring people. Our motto, and people laugh at me, but we're the one to be the Chick-fil-A of a funeral home. We want friendly people that want to be there and excited and happy. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, then, you know, I, I thank you for coming by, but I don't want you there. I want you to be happy to greet these people. I want you to make them feel welcomed and happy. And that's it. If you can do that for me to start, we're going to be all right. We're going to figure out the little things. We're going to learn how to get through the paperwork together. I don't mind typos, but if you're not friendly and courteous, you're just not going to fit in here. And that's simple. And that's one thing when I was weeding out people. I need I need happy people. And kind of tying back, back to your father, how was that transition when... Was he just allowing you to just jump right in and take over every single little thing? Or was it just bit by bit, okay, you did good here, let's give you more responsibility? How did that take part? So he gave me the funeral home keys. He said, you run it. And he'd pop up every couple of days and say, well, that's wrong. You need to fix this. And I said, Dad, you're going to have to relax. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to just sit back and breathe. It's going to be okay. I know it's scary. I'm spending a lot of money doing stuff, but I'm going to need it. And the first thing I came in is, you know, I said, we're buying new cars. I said, these cars are old. They're ugly. (laughs) We're buying new stuff. And I said, it's never been done. All our cars are black on black. Black Mm -hmm. vehicles, black rims. I say it's unique. I don't want anyone to mix us up on the road anymore. I'm tired of that. Okay, all right. We did it. I said we need new logos. I don't like that logo. Nothing against it. But I want a new brand, a new look, a new image. I want our suits to be black on black. I want everywhere we go, they know that those are the Brooks Funeral Home guys. I want to, you know, make this an impact. And it was hard for him to give up control. And it's got to be for anybody. I mean, it's hard for me to give control to those new directors to watch them walk out. I'm like, hey, hey, Mm -hmm. hey, tuck that in. And I'm turning into it. But you got to trust your staff. And that's what I'm doing, too. So I know there's going to be a new guy in five or ten years who's younger, right out of school and smarter, who has new ideas. Mm -hmm. And as an owner, 
you have to embrace those new people and let them do their thing too because you don't know everything. I know I don't. I know I'm making mistakes here and there. Little ones, hopefully. But, you know, you're going to have to embrace it. And just like my dad finally started handing it over, I'm handing it over to those people because I trust them and they've earned my trust. I ask this same question to everybody who's on this show. What does success mean to you as far as you getting up every day and doing what you're doing at work? For me, I feel like the most successful thing we can do, and for me, is I'm just thankful to be there. There was a time in uh, 2015 where, you know, we hit that point where things weren't working right. And even early in my career where you almost, you don't take the families for granted, but you take what you're doing for granted. Mm -hmm. And I would forget how important it is or what my impact was. I was just, I hate to say going through the motions, but whenever that phone rings, I'm excited. Like, I really feel like I'm making an impact to help this person out. And that's my success. In the end goal, yes, I want two funeral homes. I want a cemetery and all this. But I really feel successful now. I feel like I'm in my prime. I kind of joke with my brother and friends. I, I'm LeBron James in funeral home right now. Like, this is the prime. This is the best time to be here. And we're going through it together. And it's fun to see us winning, new people coming in, excited energy. They feel it. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. all feel it. Like, and go back. This hasn't been a long time. This is two, three years ago. This all started happening. And it's happening fast. I mean, people coming in, new families, different races, excited, working with us, you know. Yeah. So I'm feeling the success. I'm living in it. And the best part, this is just the beginning. We haven't even started to take on the new stuff that's coming. I'm just 31. So we got some time to go. And your friends, I have to ask about your friends. When your friends found out that you were taking over in leadership for your dad's business, what were their reactions? <laughs> they laughed. They said, you're going to run it? I said, well, I said, I've been running it behind the scenes. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but uh, they laughed and uh, they said, well, congratulations. They were happy for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were like, well, you got a job for me. Like, uh, no, <laughs> no. But uh, you can't. I mean, you got to keep that separate. But they definitely encourage me. They give me advice. They push me. And they always challenge me to bring new things to the table. So uh, they look out for me. And I got some really good people surrounding me that, you know, they're really pushing us. And they look out for us. And, you know, a real friend will say, hey, you know, we saw this down the street. And, you know, we just gave them one of your cards. Mm -hmm. And it means a lot. Small business is hard because if nobody's calling, you know, unlike other people who work nine to five, no one calls a funeral home. You know, the boss man still has to cut checks (laughs) and the bills still come. So I'm thankful for those people that push us, our friends on social media, our Facebook family and the community that keeps referring families. Because without the families, I'm not joking. We'll be homeless. I'm going to be on the corner. (laughs) So I really thank the people around me that look out for us and supported my dad and supported you know all the people that's ever worked at brooks funeral home and hopefully we continue to do that for years to come yeah, as a business owner personally what are some of the things that you do to get yourself over the humps when challenges do come your way <laughs> pray you need to get on your knees and pray and I, my dad is a minister i should have said that earlier tried stone baptist church so he's a funeral director and a minister but you know prayer is real And I hit some low points in life, and that's the only way I've got through it is praying. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you have to stick around those real people. You'll find them. It's hard to to get them. But when you find them, keep them because there's a few real people that will hold you down. Mm -hmm. And and, and not just financially, but just talk talk to you, Mm -hmm. talk you up. Because I've hit low points, and some days I'm, I don't know how we're going to do this. I mean, I look at the bills coming in. I look at the phone not ringing, and I'm praying. But it seems like it always, no matter what, it figures itself right. out. But you have to be humble. You have to trust the process, and you have to wait. And the best is yet to come. And that's mm-hmm. what I've learned, too, is, you know, every day is not going to be a win, but enjoy the moment. Enjoy living. I enjoy the simple things now, getting off work, playing Xbox. For <laughs> like, it, life's so busy, you, you forget to take a deep breath. Yeah. I really mm-hmm. enjoy going out to eat because there was times when we'd go out to eat every day and we weren't making any money for the business. You know, the business wasn't doing good. And there was times when we were going to play Goals Gym every day basketball, but we weren't making ourselves better. So it takes time to put in there to get it back. And similar what people always, what you put in is what you're going to get back. Mm-hmm. So I'm willing to put in everything I have to make this successful. And, you know, first first time doing this podcast, I'm streaming on Instagram, and it's a lot of followers on there that might want to be in entrepreneurship or be a small business owner. You know, what's some advice would you give to people listening as far as 
I like to start a business, but I don't know how to. What's the first step that they need to have? Number one, you need God. <laughs> and number two, like you need that. a plan. Like you that. need to really plan this out if you're going to take that leap of faith. You can do it, but it's going to be hard. And it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of people that are laughing at you and saying that's stupid. Don't quit your job. But if you really, really deep down believe in yourself, I say take the leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to do because there was times where I could turn around and get a nine to five. There was a while I was a substitute teacher for a little while because I was starting to mm -hmm. be in that phase of not trusting myself. So mm -hmm. you can do it. But um, you're going to have to really focus and plan. And it's OK to put yourself around people that know more about it. And yeah. I'll give this advice. There's nothing wrong with going to work for a company and learning some of the ins and outs before you break off. Mm -hmm. Example, my brother wanted to open a barbecue business for a little while, and I thought that was funny. I was like, well, go for it. But I said, before you go out there and buy this Grill Master 3000 and all this, <laughs> go work at Bill Miller's for two months to see the ins and outs. Yeah. I don't think I really... <laughs> so, long story short, he's still working with us. And not, nothing wrong with it, but I'm just saying, learn what you're doing before you just jump. Right. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to work and learn the ins and outs a little bit. And even if someone leaves us and goes and opens a funeral home, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because I, I've helped someone get better, and I want everyone to achieve their goals. And talk talk a little bit about uh, surrounding yourself with the right people, because it, it sounds like that you definitely had good people in your corner. I did. And, and another thing is, I had bad people, too, that I didn't know, and I'm not going to call them out or anything, but they, they just weren't as excited. And, you know, some people want to see you grow, but you grow a little bit too much, and they're uncomfortable, and the changes are too much for them, and they're, oh, well, you know, y'all used to do this. Well, we're new. And, you know, that's why I have this beard, New Year, New Me. I'm a new person, 2018. I take pride in it. So um, I'm thankful for the people I have in my corner. Um, I definitely have them, and I love them, and they know that. And, you know, we talk, and we have arguments, and we come back together and figure it out. But we have to stick together. And without that, you won't make it. I, I ran downtown. Well, to the small business office with a business plan by myself. And, you know, I had all these great ideas alone. And, you know, they, they were like, well, thanks, Mr. Brooks, but this isn't what for us. It isn't going to work. I walked in Wells Fargo. I walked in Chase. I walked in multiple banks asking for loans. And, you know, they sent me back. They said, well, when you get it together, come back. And it, it's, a, it's a good, uh, what do they say, humble pie. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it really brought me back. And you need people to talk you back up because that was hard to hear no from over 20 banks before mm -hmm. they start putting this stuff together. So we're finally, you know, figuring it out. But those people have came around. And I, I used to lay in bed wondering, you know, who can help me? And, and, and not really, like I said, uh, money-wise, but mm -hmm. just advice. You know, right. sometimes it's just someone to say, well, if you did this different, you know. So back to a small uh, business entrepreneur, if you're going to mm -hmm. do it, it's okay to tell people your goals and dreams. You don't have to keep it a big secret. That might have been one of my biggest things I've learned is it's okay to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, I can't tell them. I don't want them to know what I'm doing. It's my advice. They're going to steal it. I'm not telling tell everybody, but you're going to have to find somebody mm -hmm. to talk to. It might have to be a counselor, but you're going to need somebody to just say, hey, you know, that's a little far-fetched, but go for it. Or, you know, I don't like this. And pe people tell me no, and I'm like... Let me sleep on it. So that's my advice. Sleep on it. You can do it. And who? who oh. I was going to ask a question. Mm -hmm. It's my turn. No. <laughs> I'm jumping in there. So you not only are a funeral director, you also have, from your bio, it says um, licensed pre-need in life insurance mm -hmm. agent. Can you talk about that? Yeah, of course. Of course. <clears throat> I can sell life insurance. I work for Mutual of Omaha. Great company, great people. And I'm not saying you have to use this, but definitely call around, too, like you do the funeral home mm -hmm. or your restaurants. The rates can change a lot from company to company. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I like about Mutual of Omaha is we have ROP, return of premium. So if you get this term life package and you pay in it those 20 years, mm -hmm. after you're done, you get every premium back. That's a lot of money saved yeah. up. That's one of the things that we offer. Not a lot of companies do that. And uh, life insurance, mm -hmm. pre-need agent, mm -hmm. pre-planning. Um, that's one of my licenses I carry. I, mean, I think it's very important. I think every funeral person, funeral director should have it. That's the ability to sell a funeral in advance. Mm -hmm. It not only helps the funeral home, but it helps the family have that mm -hmm. peace of mind and security because a lot of families walk in the door and they're like, well, I think mom liked pink. Well, I think she liked blue. I think she liked purple. But if mom picked it, it's a lot easier. And we, we know that for sure. That's facts. It's studies. And we see it personally. It's just easier if they know. 
like me. When I go out, just take me out in the ocean, have a boat party and push me in. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's easier if people kind of know what you want. So I really push that, and I think it's good. What's some of the things, because uh, you mentioned your dad was a minister, what's some of the things that you always remember him giving this summer? What's one of the as things? far as his messages? Um, my dad, uh, he's gave several different topics, but one that sticks out to me is it's going to be all right. And I think that sticks with me the most mm-hmm. is even though whenever it's tough, you know, it's going to be okay. You can get through it um, because there's times everybody feels like it. I don't care how much money you have, how successful you are, how great life is. There's going to be those bumps and bruises. So you can get by, um, but it's going to be all right. It's going to take a little faith and prayer. And, uh, you know, that sums up my dad for me. He's always in my corner, even though we disagree at the theater home some days about all the changes and renovations and remodels and taking out the furniture. And we joke about it. He says, there's nothing left of me. And I said, yeah, it is the name. So, but, you know, we're going to be all right and we're going to get through it together. So. And you kind of touched earlier on goals as far as a business owner. What what's some of your current goals that you have as far as building your team and uh, keeping your your service at top level? What's some of your goals? I want to be known as just a funeral home. I want to be able to serve everyone, be very diverse, like I said earlier. And then a goal for us at the end of the day, we're in the project to build a new funeral home. It's mm-hmm. going to come. And that's gonna that goal is going to become a reality real soon. So I'm thankful for that. But the end goal, I would like to serve both sides of town. I think northeast sides where we're going, but there's still a lot of people in this community that's never heard of us, and we'd like to reach them on the northwest side. And the ultimate goal I think that's needed is we would love to compete and have a cemetery one day just for us to serve people, too. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the cemeteries, not disrespect, they're overpriced. I think we could mm-hmm. offer quality cemetery plots, make them look nice, and make them affordable. Mm-hmm. So uh, I respect them, but I think I could help people and make those graves a little cheaper, help out families. And to people who may have questions or listening right now, where can they find all the information for you? Website? Our website mm-hmm. is dwbrooksfuneralhome.com. Mm-hmm. You can follow me on Facebook. I'm Danny Brooks, or, uh, you know, and then at DW Brooks Funeral Home on Facebook. So we're there. We're available. Uh, one thing that's unique, too, mm-hmm. if you call us, if I'm not there, they're going to page me right away if I don't answer <laughs> that phone. If you need me, yeah. I'm there available. Another side thing, and I, I don't push it a lot, is we have a party bus business, Brooks Entertainment. Mm-hmm. So I know it's the funeral home and party bus, but if you need to go out for a night, we offer that, too. So uh, the families really love it. The Sprinter holds a lot more people. And we have a night business. People rent it out. A lot of our families come back a few months later and say, Mm -hmm. well, you know, that was tough, but we want to go out and have a fun night. So we took a family out the other weekend, and uh, they just had a good time, a birthday party. We enjoy seeing our families Mm -hmm. laugh because, you know, when you work with us, you're family now. You know, you got my number. You Mm -hmm. can call me personally. Like, you're my friend. You know, you've used me. I'm going to support you. If you have a restaurant Mm -hmm. or if you're a barber or if if you're catering, you know, we're going to refer those families Mm because that's what it's about. We have to look out for each other, you know. Not knocking corporations, but small business is hard. Mm -hmm. So I I give respects to you. I think this is awesome. So, you know, we really want to support our people that support us. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if they're selling plates on the weekend, you know, I have four or five lunch plates sometime, but I'm trying to support (laughs) everyone I can. So I I really want to be there because they they were there for me Mm -hmm. and they called me. And that means a lot. You know, there's 36 funeral homes in this city and you pick me. That's a big deal. 36, 36 in the city, San Antonio and surrounding area. And you pick me. Like I said, that's a huge mm-hmm. deal. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be there. Like, most people dread getting up for work, not me. I mean, mm-hmm. I'll jump at five, whatever time you want me there. If you want to meet at seven, mm-hmm. I'm there. Yeah, whatever time. I always tell my family, what time do you mm-hmm. want to come in? Uh, can we come in at nine? That, fine with me. You know, because mm-hmm. yeah. I want to be there. So how do you find time to be so active in the community? And what are some of the things that you are active in in the community that you do i'm spread thin but uh i definitely try to make time to be there if i'm invited to an event i'm mm-hmm. going it's hard saturdays are kind of booked on funeral services but mm-hmm. i try to participate uh youth basketball games we're invited to football games uh mm-hmm. any event if we're available we're mm-hmm. going uh we do get double booked so uh i try my best to be out there mm-hmm. um it's kind of hard but if if you tell us invite us come by mm-hmm. we'll come out for a little while we'll support okay so 
Yeah, I, I wanted to touch on the party bus. Did you say party <laughs> bus or is it a party bus? It is a party bus. Touch on that because that's very interesting. That's unique. <laughs> so is that geared towards the families that you are already served or is it them and everybody else? It's everyone available. It's available mm-hmm. for anyone. I mean, most of my families know about it mm-hmm. because they've used us. But the reason we got the party bus, a lot of funeral homes up north are using it. It's the limo seat, six or seven people. Mm-hmm. The party bus can fit 12. Everybody's comfortable, happy. They're all together. They're laughing. And, you know, we'll put some Sprite and Coke in there. Uh, when they rent it after hours, we can put a bottle. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever they do back there is fine. But, you know, it, it's really fun, and it's nice to see them enjoying it at another day. So, yeah, it's available for anyone. If you want to rent it, uh, you can call us or you can at uh, DW Brooks Entertainment or you can call the funeral home or Facebook me. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. definitely get you connected to book it. Because so. I think it's really unique because you, you had uh, families that you served that actually experienced this too, right? Yep. So that's very interesting to me because what were their reactions like? I'm sure it's like a very nice way of... You know, stress relieving. Because do you play music and stuff, or is it just a drive? Oh no, no, party no! Bus? The party bus. It's I mean, a party party. That's or? one of my favorite things. I was <laughs> I was actually driving last week, and I picked up some people and took them to that concert at the 18th. Well, no, what was it? Where was that? Where we at? Love and happiness. Love and happiness. Mm-hmm. I took them there. So we're listening to Charlie Wilson, mm-hmm. uh, Bobby Brown. We're having good music. So it's not quiet. Oh steps. no! Okay. Oh no! It, it was a whole mm-hmm. different atmosphere, and we enjoy that because mm-hmm. the funerals. You know, it does need to be a little more quiet. It's a little mm-hmm. gospel. But mm-hmm. after hours, they're enjoying them, having a yeah. good time. We're all for it. So that stress is... Oh, it's gone. It's gone. So we served them maybe three months ago. They came back. We had a great night laughing. Mm-hmm. That's good. And, you know, it's, that's what that's what we like to do. We want them to remember us not just as a funeral home, but good people. We like to have fun, too. Because, mm-hmm. you know, most... I would say most people, <laughs> but some people might hear, you know, someone doing funeral home business and say, oh, man, that got to be depressing, man. Like, <laughs> But hearing from you talking, that's awesome that your father had that high attitude of positivity and you also of service because it is a service to people who need your service um touch on again for entrepreneurs out there who want to see their business grow what some of the tips do you have for entrepreneurs out there who want to see their business grow better in uh, service and uh vision to do that, you need to get your name out there. You, you might need to go by, and I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you're a caterer. You might need to go by and visit people and drop off stuff. Maybe give them some samples. You know, you got to give a little to make mm-hmm. it. That's true. And, you know, it, it'll come back. I mean, I've had to give discounts, big discounts on funerals, but I, I've noticed it's come back. And, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't mind giving a flower away here or there to make it that much better for mm-hmm. the family. So if, if you can afford to do it, give a little bit. It will come back. Mm-hmm. That's probably my best advice to those guys. And let it be known, you know, social media, big tool. You have to physically go out there, too. You just can't tweet everything and not go. <laughs> Sometimes they need to see your face and know who you are. Yeah. So uh, that'll help you out. But if you can give a little, and it might be samples if you're in the restaurant business. If you're rapping, maybe give them a mixtape. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, get your word out there. It'll help you. And tying everything together, you mentioned faith. How has faith made a major impact in your life? Well, without faith, I wouldn't be here. Um, I told you I, I'm very open and honest about it. I've hit some low points where I didn't know if we'd make it. But w- faith is what keeps me going. Uh, I believe in it. I believe in the community. I believe in these families. And I believe in serving them. So you have to believe in something. I Hopefully you believe in the man upstairs. But my faith is strong. I might not go to church every Sunday. And I'm honest. Mm-hmm. I, I might have to sleep in. I'm a little tired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, with three, four funerals on a Saturday. But when I'm there or not, I still have my faith. I still read. I still look at quotes, motivational speakers. Mm-hmm. I'm strong in it. You have to have something that's higher than you to do it. And I look at it back on it. I'm like, man, Denzel, I don't know how we got through that. I don't know how we did all that. Mm-hmm. But it's only faith, and it's only his plan. So, yeah. so who's the oldest? I'm older. I'm 31. Denzel's 24. What? <laughs> Just us two. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, 
do you guys ever compete on who's going to take the roles or, <laughs> um, or you just kind of just it's pretty cool working <laughs> with your brother uh, we just have this thing where we look at each other and we can know what each other's thinking mm-hmm. we know where to be and what to do and yeah. a lot of times lately uh, we're thankful we're so busy we're split up so Denzel's leading this one out mm-hmm. I'm here over there and sometimes we call the old man up hey dad you gotta come out of retirement we need you today <laughs> and he's happy to get excited mm-hmm. to jump up and come out there with us so and we love we love having everybody there so we know what to do we're a good team and it's fun that uh, we can work together we can co coexist together because mm-hmm. you know working with family is not easy no, I mean a lot of heads it's hard you, you, for real it, it really hard. is uh, we keep it real and refocus yeah, 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 yeah that's you know. why we name it refocus for real man I'm telling you I had to refocus with them no I'm just kidding but oh, we it's, yeah. it's really hard to talk together and to tell each other hey this is wrong you need to fix it yeah, that's true. you know put your phone up and you can't know? say yes all the time somebody gotta say no somebody has to be the bad guy <laughs> somebody gotta I don't mind wearing black every day to yeah. be the black sheep no, I'm just kidding. Kidding. somebody gotta tell the truth somebody has to be real and somebody yeah. has to be real with me mm-hmm. too when I make a mistake Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's what I'm thinking for those people around to tell me, hey, Danny, you need to turn right. it down or not. You turn it up. So that's one thing we have to do is uh, look out for mm-hmm. each other. And back on entrepreneurship, because that's what I love about this platform. We're, we're definitely targeting entrepreneurs all around the country, all around the city of San Antonio. What is one thing that you feel or that you know by experience is the most key ingredient to be a solid business? Consistency, <clears throat> giving them the same thing every yeah. time. That's good. I don't care who's at the funeral. If it's me, my brother, my dad, anybody, uh, you're going to get the same quality of work every day. Huh. Um, if you call us at 3 in the morning, someone should be very courteous on the phone. If you call at 7 p.m., someone should be mm-hmm. just as courteous. If you call back asking the same question, if I answer again or whoever, they're going to just be just as friendly. We're not mad. We're not rude. And you need to give them the same thing. That's what people like. That's mm-hmm. why you go back to your favorite restaurant because yeah, it's consistent. Right. That's, true. that's why you maybe go back and buy the same brand car. It's that's consistent. Why we got these microphones. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So that's one thing I can give you is mm-hmm. whatever you do. And a lot of people are bad at it. They, the first time is the best. You go back a few weeks later and like, ah, it wasn't that good. It was right. kind of dry. Or whatever you know, if it's food. Yeah. So just be consistent with it, and it'll pay off. And lastly, man, time just flying by. Yeah. But um, let's, let's dabble into what is some of the things that you see locally in San Antonio that piques your interest as far as entrepreneurship? Because this city is, you look left and right, there's a small business everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's growing quick. What, what's some of the things that you find yourself doing to stay current in a very growing city? San Antonio is growing fast. I mean, it's really doing its thing. It's awesome to see all this development, especially what they're doing. They're rebuilding the city, rebuilding the east side, which I see every day. Mm -hmm. For us to stay relevant is we need to be open to change. Uh, That's one thing that, you know, is hard to see. But people are changing. They want Mm -hmm. cremation now. And I like to touch on this. A lot of people don't know. You can have a funeral and you can do a cremation at the end. So you get the best of both worlds. Mm. That's something that wasn't around 10, 15 Mm -hmm. years ago. Yes, it was, but it wasn't talked about. You can get best of both worlds. When my grandmother passed, that's Mm -hmm. what we did. She wanted to be cremated right away. My mom Mm -hmm. wanted a funeral. We did both. And that's one of the packages we promote. And that's something that's changing in the industry. Mm -hmm. Uh, You need to be aware of it or you're going to get left behind in the times. Mm -hmm. So I I definitely tell anybody, you know, put it out there. Let them know what they can do and give them all the options. Not every funeral is the same. You know, it's Mm -hmm. not a cookie cut funeral. If you want flowers and balloons and if you want a horse and carriage, they're all celebrations and we're going to do all types. So make sure you can accommodate any family. Every funeral is just important mm-hmm. to me, and it's personalized. So I want to do each one for that family the way they want. Have you ever had a situation where you had to give your opinion respectfully or never? It's always mm-hmm. if they want that and they want that, they're going to. Um, I mean, if they want it, we're going to do it best we can. Mm-hmm. Some things are a little far-fetched. Mm-hmm. Uh, they ask for <laughs> celebrities here and there. I know they're playing mm-hmm. around. I wish I could get the Spurs to come to every funeral. I really <laughs> wish I could. That's just, I don't have that power. We're across the street from right. the AT&T Center, mm-hmm. but they don't come hang out with me. So, <laughs> and they don't give me tickets. I wish they would. But, you know, that's just something. But most of the time, we can accommodate them. You know, if you need five limos or ten, we'll figure out. We'll mm-hmm. get the extras. So, um, we, like I said, we can do horse and carriage, full military honors, flag folding, whatever you need. We know so, you what really to do. can do horse and carriage. Oh, yeah, we've really? done it. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. We got a guy that has a black pony and mm-hmm. a white one, or horse, I guess is what wow. you call it. But yeah, we'll get it. We'll block the street up for you with the escorts mm-hmm. and have that special moment. So I think it's unique. You don't see it every day, mm-hmm. especially here. No, so it's a don't. it's a northern thing, but we can definitely mm-hmm. accommodate that. And to the person listening, when you're not busy doing all this, which there's never a non dull moment, what's some of the things you enjoy doing outside of uh, your business? Like you like sports. What's some of the things? Spurs, what? <laughs> I like being on funerals. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just playing. Um, in my free time, <laughs> I uh, I definitely enjoy being at Spurs games. Uh, we we go to a few here and there. I love watching basketball. I played football, but I really enjoy watching more basketball. Mm-hmm. So I just, I don't know. I think it's one-on-one. You can take mm-hmm. them out. I, I enjoy LeBron. I'm sad Kawhi's out for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. I enjoy Xbox. I'm not going to lie. That's one of my things. I enjoy being at home. I'm not a lot of time. I'm at so home. you do have a life. <laughs> yeah, I do well, have a life. Is a, life. a few you know, hours I'm talking about outside of business. <laughs> yeah. you a few have hours a life. out the day I'm at home. So I enjoy cooking. I don't get to do it as much, but I like to try to burn mm-hmm. up something. So we do enjoy that downtime. We love to be mm-hmm. busy, but it, it's nice when you get home around nine or ten at night and get to take off your shoes <laughs> and relax. And we got that final four coming up. Yes, we do. <laughs> so uh, what is that coming up in a couple months? March. Yeah. March yeah. Madness. So. March Madness. Trey Young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's doing it. So I'm sure he's going to win it. The reason why I ask that question is, is because uh, how do you keep the culture in your staff on the up and up? Because mm. they, invi- they individually go through stuff, too, in real life. So right. what what some things you do to keep the atmosphere on a high note? Um, I just got to keep them motivated. They have to drink the Kool-Aid I drink. You know, we're going to do it. We're going to have bad months in sales for my pre need team. We're going to have great months, and we're all going to be celebrating eating steaks. But, you know, it'll be okay. You need to be smart, consistent, and keep going. I have bad months, too. And I have months I'm upset and mad. But at the end of the day, sleep it off and get back on it. And I just, I've really got to keep them hyped up and happy because that's what I am. And I want positive people around me. Mm -hmm. I don't want mopers or complainers. If everything's bad for you, you know, Maybe this isn't for you, mm-hmm. but I want those positive people mm-hmm. that know how to turn that switch on and be excited to right. be there. If you don't want to be here, it's okay. We're still friends. Just mm-hmm. you won't work here. <laughs> but you know, I really push them. You know, we can do this. We can be unique, and we got to be classy everywhere we go. You know, I want you to mm-hmm. represent me, even though you're off work. You know, I don't want you acting a fool on the street either. So you know, talking about that just reminded me of once we usually go to the South by Southwest Kingdom experience, the Kingdom side in Austin. And Shemai and I, we go, my husband, he goes, he helps us with the equipment. And a couple years back, I think it was, um, and what I'm getting ready to say is, it's, it's going to kind of tie in with Shemaya was talking about how do you keep that focus, that balance. But our my oldest son, he was living in Vegas at the time and got a phone call the same day we were getting up to get ready to go to Austin that he was brutally attacked. Wow. Violently attacked. And so we still had to go. We still had to perform and do, you know, what we were going to Austin to do, even though we got that phone call. But thank God that, you know, he's still here. Thank God. That's he, right. He made it through that, that violent attack. But what I what my point is in that, no matter what life throws at you and what you're doing as far as your business or, or just going to work or whatever it is that you have to do, it still has to be done. You ain't joking. And you still have to put that face on. And But like you, you uh, mentioned several times in the, in the podcast, God has to be your number one. That's it. And prayer. So that is the thing that sustained us to be able to go and still do what we normally do. And it was just even a greater experience because... I can't. I can't even explain it. I mean, to to get a phone call to know that your son was brutally attacked, violently attacked, mm-hmm. and he could have lost his life, and then you have to go and do the job that you know you're supposed to do, and, you put and do it with joy. Yeah, and, 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 and the Lord just—you feel the Lord carrying you through that. It's just you know, 
you got to have God in your life. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. I mean, I've been there with negative $500 in the bank and still got a smile at a funeral. So I know <laughs> the feeling. I, I, I ain't joking. I'll tell you the truth. I've been there. It hurts. That hurts. It hurts to put on that suit, drive that Cadillac with no money. So <laughs> I'm just being honest. Yeah. But I put it on and I'm thankful to do it because yeah. I don't have to be here. So right. I'm I'm proud. So if you don't do it, who's going to do it? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody right. takes my place on a sick day. You know, I don't get the call in like exactly. everyone else. So, but uh, it's hard to put it on, but you need to because then people mm-hmm. depend on you. Those people at that event needed you. Yeah. These people at these funerals need me to carry them through it. They look at me. Mm-hmm. Danny, what do I do next? Where do we go? So I'm here to help them. I'm mm-hmm. here to take all that pain and worry off and make this smooth as possible. Mm-hmm. So you got to put it on. You got to put on the smile. Yeah. And I need people around me that can do it. Mm-hmm. Some can. Some can't. That's okay. But yeah. I need you to be able to help mm-hmm. them feel good. Exactly. If um, I'm not sure if you said it earlier, but what was one thing that your dad has taught you when it comes to business that sticks out to you? Um, just again, you got to treat everybody right. You got to be respectful. And, uh, you know, he's just a good person. I mean, my dad will really, I mean, he'll give you everything he has. And there's times I've seen it growing up. My dad will pay everybody at the funeral home, make sure they're good and their families are going to say, hey, guys, we're not going to Toys R Us this weekend. I'm going to have to get y'all in two weeks. And we understood that little. Toys R Us. Hey, I'm going back, way back. That's but real. we understood that and we knew. And that's how much we were excited to be there. We said, hey, you know, do what you do. We believe in you. Our mom believes in him. We believe in him. So, and and it's hard. I wear the crown now. It's hard, you know, mm-hmm. and there's times I go without, you know, I can't get, I wanted those Drake shoes and I couldn't get both of them. So, <laughs> you know, uh, it is what it is, but mm-hmm. you got to be smart and responsible first. I carry a lot of people around me. I carry my family. I got employees. They look for that on Friday. I can't tell them, hey man, I bought this uh, jumpsuit so I can't pay you, <laughs> but I'll get you back on the first. That don't work. They're pissed off. No, I don't, don't want to get cursed mm-hmm. out by my staff. That and they look work. at me like, look at this joke, this guy, this kid. So, so, you know, it's hard to carry that responsibility. A lot of people look up to me. And not only that, these families look up to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't say, oh, well, I, I can't get the casket today because I spent your money. Like, it's a lot of That's responsibility. Right. A lot of people look forward, look at me and look up to me. So I take pride in being responsible, mm-hmm. being on time. That's something I got maybe from Judson uh, playing football. Like, you know, we do things two minutes early, like that football practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't recall the last time we've been late to the house. And I'm not bragging. We take pride to pick your family up early. We don't want to be known as a joke and oh, yeah. they were 10 minutes late. 10 minutes late to the mm-hmm. house means you're 20 minutes late to the funeral, which means you're 15 minutes late to the cemetery. Now I'm getting cussed out. Now I got to refund the family for that car. Mm-hmm. We don't want that. We don't want to be that people. It's not a joke. It's serious. So I don't know. I got off on that. I don't like to be late. Oh, that's, that's, that's right. real because <laughs> I was like military. I do uh, uh, radio show on Saturdays and it's all military folk on 8 o'clock. <laughs> And they always do military time. It's funny. But they always say if you're 10 minutes early, you're on time. That's right. That's so right. That's, that's something that we all can apply to in our lives to take life serious. You know, everything that you're doing, do it with a purpose and don't take it lightly. That's right. Because in order for anybody to have more opportunity in life, you have to be trusted. Like the Bible talks mm-hmm. about, if you're trusted for a few things and you do it right, well, then you have more responsibility. What's some of the things that that you also look forward to when you serve these families who come to you day in, day out? What's some of the things that just keep you just high energy? My favorite part about being doing this is I like that first initial contact with the family. When it happens, I really like to be to get to the hospital and be there or that house call. I know that's weird, but I want to be the first person they see. I think it means something when you see the owner that shows up and shakes your hand and picks you up and mm-hmm. says, hey, I'm here for you, too. Like, right. I don't know if you ever go to a restaurant and if the owner comes around, you're like, man, he, they doing it all right. It but, good, yeah. and, and nothing against the ones that can't because you're busy. But it means something to be there. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind jumping up like a firefighter at 3 a.m. to rush to Methodist Hospital. I have a black suit on a hanger every night ready to go. <laughs> I mean, sure. it's like my jersey. Sure you're not trying I, to iron real fast. I put it on. I'm ready. I'm flying out the house in 10 minutes. Sometimes I leave my phone. I'm so excited. I turn back. <laughs> but it means something. That's and good. If I could, I would meet every single family for the arrangement conference, too. And that's something I'm, I have to trust my guys, my new ones, to meet them. I know they can, but I like to be everywhere if I can. 
But if I can be on the first call to get them and to talk with them and just to shake their hand and say, hey, I'm here for you, too. It, that's my favorite thing to do is to be there from the first mm-hmm. wave. I think it sets the tempo. I think Definitely. if the boss man could come out at 3 a.m., everybody should be able to mm-hmm. get up and go. There's no excuses. I, you can't be late if I beat you. So, <laughs> that is real. Yeah. That is true. It's very rare someone beats me to the office. And I love the point you made about being at a restaurant because it, it does make a difference when you see the owner of the restaurant mm-hmm. going around and just greeting people and right. saying, hey, how's the food? And same thing in your shoes. You know, you're just making sure the service is being done right and there's no sloppiness. Because as a business owner, you know, you earn your stripes. That's right. And everyone is sloppy one time. <laughs> Everybody. You know, maybe not now, but back in the day, we all had our, our moments. What advice would you give people? There's another question I ask our guests on the show. Anyone who might feel like they're stuck out there? Well, <laughs> that's the great thing about this name is refocused. Mm-hmm. I was at that point where I wasn't focused. I was a good funeral director, but I wasn't great. I was stuck in the middle. I was, I'm not going by the motions, but I wasn't being the best I could be. I wasn't putting as much effort into each detail as, you know, that wheels right there is not straight to me. And if that was a casket truck, that's what I'm picturing. Mm-hmm. It needs to be right because the family might not notice. That funeral home from Austin might see it, but I want everybody to know those wheels are straight. I want to know everybody. That shirt, iron. That tie is tied best we can tie it. You know, if there's a veteran, those medallions are right. And I don't know. I, I don't have. I'm not in the military, mm-hmm. but we'll Google search to make sure we have those correct right. form because we want it right. Yeah. And we'll make sure before the family. Pre- hey, is this okay? Is this the way you want it? Mm-hmm. You know, it means something. And and that's what I refocused and took pride in is making sure every detail is right best Mm -hmm. we can. We make mistakes all the time. Mm -hmm. We get thousands of requests. Take a fingerprint of my dad. Do this. We have to write it down and occasionally we'll miss something. A few days ago the family wanted the gentleman's boots by the casket. We put them on him. Mm. Okay, we took them right off. It's not a huge mistake, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we were we're not perfect. We right. make mistakes, but we fix it. They were okay. They mm-hmm. said, "Don't worry about it. Just we want them back." Mm-hmm. Problem fixed. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to act like we're the best perfect thing. Mm-hmm. We're doing our best we can. And I there's errors. One. Right. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Definitely not me. But we're going to try to fix it for mm-hmm. you. So we just try to accommodate you best we can. And before we close out, we got about four minutes. Uh, what's something that you would like to tell the audience, whether it's about your business or if it's about planning with your services, insurance? What's some of the things you want to make sure the audience know? I got a couple of little quick things. Uh, one thing is a lot of families don't know. When when a call when you get that call at 2 a.m. and someone's passed, you panic. You don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. You might have called the funeral home already. That's okay. They have mom or dad. Do you know that you can still call a few other people and price quote? My price could be thousands of dollars different than the next guy. And maybe the next guy is thousands of dollars mm-hmm. cheaper. I doubt it. But <laughs> you never know. So take a moment and shop around. That's the most important thing you can do. And if funeral home A has them, you can transfer to funeral home B or even to funeral home C. Sometimes we're C. They went through a few transfers mm-hmm. to help them, and we've saved them a lot of money because we are a business, but we're trying to help people. Our whole goal is we want every family that walks through that door to come back, mm-hmm. and then they tell three people and come back again. So, you know, one thing you need to know is you can transfer them if you need to, you know, if you want to. Or or take your deep breath and shop around, you know. It happens, you're mm-hmm. scared. The person might be in their house on the floor. Call 911 first. Sometime they call me. We need mm-hmm. to make it official. So mm-hmm. call them to get there. And while you're waiting for the medical mm-hmm. examiner to come and pronounce, it takes about an hour to two hours. Mm-hmm. Shop at funeral homes. Look around. Pull out your phone like you do mm-hmm. to figure out what dentist you're going to or where you're going to eat, mm-hmm. you know. Take your time. So that's something real important. Uh, also... We serve a lot of veterans in this community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of info the funeral homes might not know they should. Uh, Go to www.va.gov. There's plenty of info. Mm -hmm. If you don't know it, veterans, call me. I don't mind answering. A lot of veterans walk through the door and say, well, my dad served 10 years, and they're paying for it. Well, they're not. They're just paying for the cemetery Mm -hmm. portion to bury him and his headstone and his grave liner. So make sure you know or look at his policies. You know, Um, we'll definitely help you. But it's good to look at that in advance because a lot of veterans are mad and they realize it's just the cemetery that's paid for. So that's something key. And I tell people uh, all you need to do when that happens is get his discharge papers. Mm -hmm. Uh, The military people know a DD-214. They'll know what I'm talking about. And 
Give, can you give us your website again? How people uh, contact you? Of course. www.dwbrooksfuneralhome.com. If you Google search Brooks Funeral Home, we're going to pop up. And if you look for highest rated funeral homes, we're up there. Probably number one, but we're up there. So look us up. We're out there, and we're proud of that, and we're thankful for the people in the community. I want to thank all the ministers out there who keep referring families to use us. I want to thank the community that keeps referring people. I want to thank the people from social media, these new families that are giving us an opportunity, families from out of the state when a loved one dies here and they don't live here to call us and try. There's a lot of people out here making it work. So if I haven't shook your hand personally in a while or seen you, thank you. Like you don't understand how humble and thankful I am to be here. And I thank you guys for allowing me to be on this platform to get my voice out. Most time funeral home people, you'll never talk to them except for them one or two times in life, right. but mm-hmm. I'm really excited <laughs> to be able to tell people a little bit. There's a ton of info. I could go on for hours. I'm I'm sad it's up. I was nervous two days ago, but <laughs> it, it's really flew by. Like I'm like, man. It, it it's, man. But it, thanks to Chris. <laughs> That's right. I Shout have to, to thank her. you. contacted us. Best girlfriend us in the world. about you all. That's the girlfriend. Ah, there that's you it. go. So. <laughs> that's, that's it. First, I was thinking sister. Nope, nope, okay. nope. That's they think one I'm of them Shemaya's people. sister. That's one of them people in the circle right there, for real. <laughs> she that. was on it. That oh, she <laughs> was on it, man. <laughs> well, we definitely want to thank you for taking your time out, your busy schedule to talk to us and talk to our audience about what you do professionally in your business. And I'm pretty sure your father is very proud of you and your brother uh, carrying the legacy of serving. Uh, probably the most difficult times that people will face. So with that being said, we thank you for what you're doing for the community in San Antonio because it's not easy. Not at all. And somebody has to step up. Without closing the show right away, I want to give a big thank you to our sponsors. You know, the head one, the partner, Rico Rodriguez of Rockefeller's Barbershop, San Antonio, Texas, and also Miss Kim for the best donuts in San Antonio, River City Donuts. And if you're trying to get in shape and if you're trying to get real strong and get potential NFL or NBA status, you need to go to Bebe McClinton All Sports Speed and Conditioning. Go see him. He is at 1228 Safari and that's San Antonio, Texas. He will get you in shape and like I said guys, all the time, every Thursday we are blessed to be able to talk to you guys and have someone to share their story, share their passion and tell you guys about business and tell you guys of their journey in life. I never want to close this broadcast without saying put God first, stay blessed and peace. Peace.